this is Rainbow Harmony here to help you find balance and peace to live a more colorful life and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to do a makeup tutorial. This is a look that I've done recently in one of my videos and so many of you guys like DM'd and commented like that you wanted to see me recreate this look in a makeup tutorial. And just in general, I've had a lot of you guys, some of my coaching clients and regular clients have been like, where are your makeup tutorials? Why did you stop? And um, yeah, honestly, I'll be real with you guys. I started my Tretinoin journey and if you guys don't know what tretinoin is, it's like this, this medicated like skin cream. It's basically a retinol and it's absolutely amazing. I didn't start it because I have acne or anything. I just have some like sunspots. I mean, I have freckles, but like I had a couple sunspots and I noticed that my skin was just like, you know, starting to age because I'm getting into my 30s here. And I heard from so many people about how important it is to add a retinol to your skin routine. And so I wanted some of those anti-aging benefits. And also it's supposed to make your skin just like baby smooth. And so I started it, I think in August. And what happens when you start a retinol or tretinoin is that you go through what's called like a purge. So your skin starts to like breakout and I was absolutely horrified when, when when this started happening even though I was expecting it my skin was just it was horrible and I covered it up with makeup in all my videos I did not want to do a makeup tutorial like I didn't want to be putting too much makeup on my face but I think at this point I have made it through the breakout period you can still see like a couple of them but I've made it through and I'm starting to reap the benefits it takes around a year for you to really get those benefits from the tretinoin, but I'm just starting to notice it and I'm really happy about it. So yeah, if you guys want me to keep you updated or make videos on my tretinoin journey, let me know. If any of you guys have added a retinol to your skincare routine and you can sympathize with me, let me know below. But anyways, I'm back. I'm doing a makeup tutorial. This is just gonna be a really gorgeous look. I'm super excited for this. And I thought I would do like a chatty style get ready with me because usually I just voice over because I tend to get carried away and these videos end up being like an hour long. But I figured a lot of you guys are probably still quarantining and maybe you want some company and to get to know me better. And I had a lot of you guys asking questions on my Instagram recently. Um, sometimes I do like ask me anything. So follow me on Instagram. And I do daily card readings on my Instagram too. And I thought I would answer your questions while I do makeup. So let's start with foundation. This is one of my favorites. It's really great for summer. It's the Dior Skin Nude Air Serum Foundation. And I'm just going to, well, actually fail. It's been a while, you guys. <laughs> First, I'm gonna start with my Fenty Beauty Primer. Duh, we gotta start with primer. So, oh no, am I running out? Am I running out? Oh my gosh, this is my worst nightmare. I ran out. Oh! I'm really sad about that because I can't get mail here. I'm in Montenegro. I'm living in Montenegro. I like literally could not get mail. And there's no Sephora anywhere here. So I don't know what I'm going to do about that. Anyways, we're going to start with this. It's okay to use it without a primer, but you know, I always like to do the primer. I have moisturizer and sunscreen on my skin already. I just put some on the back of my hand and I'm just going to go in and kind of dot it around. It has a very like watery consistency. And I love this because you can build it up and it's like very low to medium coverage, which I know some of you guys want that high coverage, but... I don't know, something about this just makes your skin look like skin, but like perfect. I think it kind of reminds me of like the Glossier foundation. And I don't really like to use a sponge with this because it kind of eats it all up, but I don't know. I think I'm just gonna do that for today because I really want to get that flawless finish. But as you guys can see, what it does is it like covers the redness and I can go in later and cover up like any like, like this over here or anything like that. 
so this is what has been giving me life lately just like doing my makeup getting pretty sometimes you just kind of feel gross you know during this whole lockdown thing and you just want to get dolled up so now i'm going to go in with my fenty matchsticks in amber we just put on all this foundation now my face is like pasty and we have to add in back some dimension so i'm just going to this has lasted forever by the way like well it's almost gone but when i got it it was barely bigger than this and i was like oh my gosh what a ripoff but man it has actually lasted a really long time i'm not gonna go too crazy over here because my hair is like covering it but so your questions the first one is do you have any other hobbies besides tarot um definitely i mean my whole life is not just tarot i love tarot obviously but it's not like it doesn't define me um lately i've really been loving to make like necklaces i've been beading a lot this is something i picked up over the summer because there was this really lovely bead shop where i was living in croatia and i really wanted to support the local businesses because they were struggling a lot because of the pandemic and i just kind of got on this beading kick and then i was going to all these vintage markets i had been collecting like a lot of jewelry and beads and like things that were falling apart already and so i just put everything together and i started making these uh, necklaces they're very like beachy and they're super fun I love to wear them while I'm like swimming I've given a lot of them to friends and I'm definitely starting to get a little carried away I actually made two more last night and I'm very very excited about them I'll like put in a clip over here so you guys can see but that has been something I've really been enjoying lately I've really been loving like making the jewelry so Okay, now I'm going to do eyebrows, and you know what, you guys? You know that Benefit, um, like that little skinny brow pencil? I forget what it's called, but it's the one from Benefit. This is a great dupe for that. I was buying the Benefit one, but then I realized this is pretty much exactly the same. And it's from Maybelline, and it's the Brow Ultra Slim pencil, and it's legit. So I'm just going to brush up my brows, and then just draw them in lightly. Nothing crazy. I want to just show you guys like how easy this really is and if for anybody who's wondering I do have my eyebrows microbladed it's a, I think I might need to get them done again soon but it's a lot easier to draw my eyebrows in when I already have the shape created and when I got them done I really loved it but I didn't get numbed and it hurt so bad and it freaked me out I don't know if I ever like want to get a tattoo because if that's what it's like it scared me but it was worth it it was totally worth it and the girl who did it did a really great job so um what is your animal totem so if you guys don't know everybody does have like an animal totem or spirit animal or whatever you want to call it and mine is actually the hummingbird. I feel like the hummingbird is all about enjoying your life and um, just being fun and optimistic and spreading good vibes and finding the nectar in life. And I just feel like that represents me and I've always had hummingbirds come up to me. I remember when I was like going through a really hard time when I was living in LA. I always talk about that time in my life because man, you guys, that was like when I went through my spiritual awakening and I would go running at the Silver Lake Reservoir almost every day because it was just like how it would blow off steam. And these hummingbirds would always just like fly up to me while I was running, it was so fun. There's a lot of hummingbirds over there. So yeah, I think the brows are looking pretty good. I'm going to brush out this and I ran out of brow gel. I had, you guys might remember if you watch a lot of my other makeup tutorials, I would always use that Dior brow gel and I ran out and there's no place to get that here. So I'm going on a huge Sephora haul at some point when I leave this country, that is for sure. So the next question is what is a typical day in the life like for you? So, okay, what are we gonna do next? I think next we're gonna go into the eyes. 
So if you want to follow my makeup tutorials, all you need is this palette, the Anastasia Norvina palette. I, you guys know I'm traveling the world, I pack light, and I don't have room for like a million makeup palettes, so I had to narrow my collection down to one. And this is it for me. It's because it's more of a cool toned palette. It's kind of more of like a neutral cool toned palette. Um, as you can see, um, the colors here are just beautiful. I just have so much fun with this. And I'm today what we're going to do is more of like a purple look. So we're going to be using this color Celestial right here. And my tip is if you have hooded eyes or semi hooded eyes like mine, just use one eyeshadow color. I know like you want to add all the depth and everything. Those of you guys who have eyes that are a little bit more open, that's fine. If you want to add like a darker purple, like maybe this one right here to add a little bit of depth or cut crease or whatever, that's fine. But I usually just use one eyeshadow color. Like I stopped just, I think it breaks up your eye. I don't know if that makes sense, but I, I learned this back when I used to work as a makeup artist. I know I mentioned that a lot here on the channel, but I did, for a short time, work as a makeup artist in Los Angeles. I was mainly a fashion stylist, but I had to learn like makeup trips, uh, tricks because sometimes I couldn't get a makeup artist or they would cancel. And then I started getting pretty good at it. I started kind of getting a little kit developed. And then I even got hired. I did a lookbook, um, a fashion lookbook. I did the makeup, had a couple things published. It was cool. Um, I learned some tricks for sure. I wouldn't consider myself as professional at makeup as some of the people that like I worked with. Oh my gosh, they're amazing. Like I still am really bad at doing like liquid liner and stuff like that, but I got pretty good, I guess. I got okay at it. So yeah, I'm just taking this and I'm just kind of packing it in and I'm bringing it up here and kind of out to the side a little bit. And then I'm going to blend a lot, of course, but... Oh my gosh, you guys, it's hard to like do makeup and talk at the same time. I have a feeling this video is going to be like super long. Anyways, typical day in the life. I mean, my life is very different lately just because of like where I'm living and the, you know, the lockdown and everything. But lately I've been getting up at some time. The first thing I do is I drink some water and then I do Chloe Ting. Is anybody else here doing Chloe Ting? Uh, her workouts. I've been doing Chloe Ting. Yes. Oh my gosh. It's been energizing me. It's been making me strong. It's been getting me ready for summer because in the summer I swim a lot. I do a lot of activities usually and I like to be fit. So I've been doing Chloe Ting and after that um, I stretch and I, I do affirmations while I'm stretching and then I usually like pray and set my intention for the day and I've actually, I guess I've kind of been doing it in intermittent fasting. I haven't like been eating like right away in the morning. I don't know why. It just seems better for me. So usually then I get ready and like check my emails, write back to people, like just kind of see if anybody's ordered anything, see if anybody's purchased like a same day reading because I usually have to kind of move my schedule around a little bit for that. And then I will eat a little something and then I'll go down the hill and because I'm living right on the beach right now in this gorgeous location. Um, it's a very like quiet little village. I'm kind of near a city so I can go in for like groceries or if I need anything, but I'm pretty much just like out here. And it's mainly like a vacation like village where people have a lot of summer homes. So like there's barely anybody living right here right now and it's really, really nice. I just feel like I can definitely like self-isolate, socially distance and whatnot, and have some quiet. And yeah, I'll walk down the hill and I'll go to the beach and sometimes I'll record down there. Like you guys have seen a couple of readings where I've been outside. Um, or I'll just hang out with my husband and we'll just like go on a walk. And there's this cute dog that sometimes follows us and walks with us, so it's nice. It's almost like having a pet or something. And then I'll come back and then at that point I'll start my work and so I'll do a couple of readings. I'll take breaks in between. Um, sometimes I'll like stop and have a cup of tea and like go out on the balcony and just kind of look at the ocean. And um, I have other creative projects that I'm working on. Secret projects that I can't say anything about right now but I'm working on that. A couple things. Sometimes I'll like bead my necklaces and sometimes I have like a Skype 
that I have to do. Like, I do life coaching, so I have, like, a coaching client or two. Um, and then usually around 7 or 8 p.m., like, my work is done. Sometimes I work late at night, though. It just depends. Like, sometimes I'm in a mood where I just, like, want to get ahead on my work or I'm feeling really inspired or, like, super, like, hyphy and psychic and I just, like, want to do, like, pick a card readings and stuff, so I'll do that. But, yeah, usually I, I eat dinner and... And then my husband and I will like read books together or we'll like watch movies or uh, we'll just kind of relax. And then yeah, I go to bed and every night before I go to sleep, I always like end my day with gratitude, just like saying what I'm thankful for. And uh, of course I have like an extensive skincare routine that I do before I go to bed. That's important to me. I'm obsessed with skincare. And then I'll say some prayers and hopefully fall asleep but every day isn't perfect like that like I have insomnia and I deal with you guys know anxiety depression PTSD ADHD we got a lot going on up over here and so yeah sometimes it's it's hard to get to sleep so I'll just like stay up really late and but I still just no matter what time I wake up or go to bed or whatever I still try to keep roughly that routine it really really helps me I think if you're someone who has ADHD or honestly anxiety depression PTSD any of the things I'm kind of dealing with like I think having a routine really really helps no matter what happens to your day no matter how you're feeling just keep a couple things consistent it really really helps I don't really like routine but I've realized it helps me so yeah, that's kind of my daily life lately so as you guys can tell I got sidetracked and just got really into doing my makeup but I think it's looking good I'll have to show you guys this in another light. I don't know why the light in here got really weird. Oh well, Let's see if I can fix it in the camera in a second. Um, so next, what we're going to do is kind of start working with the skin. I'm gonna like contour and like powder it a little bit. Maybe I'm gonna contour my nose and just start bringing that out, okay? So I'm gonna go in with the classic Hoola Bronzer. I really do like this. I don't know if it's 100% the right color for me. I feel like there's this bronzer from Marc Jacobs I've been wanting to get. Um, and of course there's a Fenty bronzer, the one in Into Sun. I really wanna get that one, but every time I go it's like they're out of it. But this is good, I feel like it's, it's nice. It's kinda of classic, so yeah. I'm gonna start bronzing everything everywhere and I'll answer some more questions. Let's do the cheeks first though. I think the best tip, by the way, for bronzer or for like doing powder on your face is do gentle sweeping motions. I learned that by having my makeup done by like legit makeup artists in LA um, and, and learning myself. Like if you press too hard, I see a lot of people doing that. It can make the makeup kind of chalky. So just like really it's a brush. Be very gentle with it. It like it's powder, you know, you want to be gentle. So that's my tip. Where else do you want to travel to? Um, I have a couple locations in mind. I keep thinking about Morocco. I really want to go to Morocco and also Tunisia. Like I didn't even know Tunisia was like a thing until I started getting really creative and like looking into where can I travel despite all the restrictions right now. I mean, I'm probably not going to go anywhere for a little while um, and just kind of stay put here in Montenegro, but I was just kind of looking for the heck of it. And I noticed that like you, like there's, there's a way. And I just like started researching it and thought it was really pretty. There's like this island there that looks gorgeous and just looks really interesting. And I really love, um, I don't know, I love those North African countries and I really love the Middle East. Like I, I loved Egypt. Like, I don't know, there's just like a vibe there. I love it, so I would love to spend more time there. Um, I want to go to Bali, of course. I mean, that seems to kind of be like the mecca for digital nomads and travelers. And I see why. You can stay there longer. Um, the cost of living is really great. You can get like a really awesome villa. Um, the only thing that concerns me about it is I do think that there are a lot of people who are going there and kind of acting foolish and like just not being respectful to the, in trashing the place. I feel like if I went there, it would have to be in the right way. I would wanna make sure that I like 
kind of do my part. I don't know. I'm still trying to figure out like how do you travel consciously and ethically. It's something I kind of struggle with a lot. Um, just trying to do my part, but also follow my heart and my calling. But I definitely want to go there. I really want to go to South Korea. I just think the people are amazing there. The food looks amazing. The lifestyle seems really cool. Like there's so many cool nature spots. Um, gosh, there's so many places I want to go, but those are the main places that are on my mind lately. I even started learning, um, uh, Korean. I started learning it and the alphabet Hangul. I can read Korean now. Um, and I'm, yeah, I can actually like, if, if I see the writing, I can read it. I'm still learning like pronounce it all correctly, but yeah, that's what I did over the summer. That's like how obsessed with South Korea I was over the summer. <laughs> um, and now I'm like learning to speak the language, so, but I feel really happy and super accomplished that I, that I, yeah, I learned this, this foreign alphabet. It's pretty cool. So now I'm going to get really into the nose contour just because I have all these questions to answer and why not? We're just chilling. So I actually got this at the grocery store in Spain and it was like $2. I don't know what it is. It's Deli Plus Color. I think it's like the grocery store's like brand. But it's supposed to be an eyebrow pencil, but I started realizing that it's perfect for nose contour. And uh, there's like a white side and then like this brown side. So yeah, it's kind of perfect for a nose contour. So we're going to do it. Um, the next question. Oh my gosh. Have you ever been freaked out by your gifts? Has anything crazy ever happened during a reading? Um, for sure. I don't think I would like be doing this job if I didn't like somehow kind of like believe in the tarot. Like I think the tarot is definitely like an extension of yourself. And, um, you know, even if you're a skeptic, it's just like an interesting way to look at life. And like, I love the story of the, the fool's journey through the tarot. It's like, um, it's just, it's nice to kind of look at that. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. <laughs> Yeah, I like the story of the fool's journey and like I think it's something everyone can take something from it, but I'll definitely say that like yeah, I am a, a little bit more open-minded to there be actually being spirit guides or ancestors or whatnot speaking through the cards sometimes. Like definitely things happen that I can't explain. Like a lot of times I will be doing a reading and I'll have my cards over here on the left and I will like look over to grab another deck and there will be cards that are just flipped over and like part of me is like oh yeah I totally could have bumped those cards over but they're just so perfect and on point for what I was talking about with the person and it's like they did somehow got flipped over or cards going flying or me just knowing things I shouldn't know like for instance um yesterday I did a reading for somebody who was a teacher and I pulled the teacher card it literally said teacher and then I pulled um the princess of wands and that's like a card for someone who's a teacher so I had no idea what this woman did with her life what her job was and it was a love reading but I um I told her like you're a teacher your gifts are to be a teacher and I like had this vision of her teaching and when she wrote me back in the email to like say thank you for the reading. She told me that she was a teacher, in fact. So I've had crazier things happen for sure. Some of them might be a little bit more private. Like, I don't know if I want to share like too much stuff about my clients or whatnot, but um, yeah, I've maybe some of you guys should comment below if anything's ever crazy has happened during your reading that I've done for you. Let me know because I love hearing that kind of stuff. And that keeps me going when I wake up and I see emails or get comments of people being like, you're spot on. Like, not everybody's going to get those crazy bells and whistles from my reading. Sometimes it's just, you know, common sense knowledge or just very straightforward. And sometimes crazy stuff does happen. It happens to me all the time. I pull cards where I'm like, oh my gosh, like how is that even, how do they know? <laughs> so I think it, that, that's the magic of the tarot is just like how serendipitous or coincidental some of the cards can be sometimes. And it just helps you feel like you're not alone and helps you figure things out. So yeah, definitely some crazy stuff has happened for sure. Um, the next question, uh, well, let's move on to the next part of the makeup. So what are we going to do next? Um, let's do some powder. Okay. So I'm using this Chanel powder. It's legit. Um, I'm going to put some underneath my eyes and just start kind of lightly powdering down my face a little bit. And then we're going to finish up the eyes and Maybe do some highlight, do the lips. 
eyeliner. So tell us more about your husband. Okay, so my husband's name is John. He's five, six years older than me. I don't know. I know that's crazy, but like I always forget his age. Isn't that kind of ridiculous? I know what his birthday is, but I'm always like, how old are you again? Sometimes I forget my own age though, so. Maybe it's just like an ADHD thing. Like I tend to forget people's names, like little details like that. I don't know. So um, he, uh, he's, how do I describe him? Oh my gosh. He's, the first thing I would say, he's an artist. He's like a jack of all trades. He can pick things up really, really fast. He's done so many things. Like he can sew, he can knit, he can sing, he can dance. He's like a really good dancer randomly. I'm like, what the heck? He, um, <laughs> there's been times where I've had him learn how to like French braid my hair or something because I can't do it. He picks that kind of stuff up. Um, he he is a music producer and he's also an app developer and computer programmer. So that's like what he does for work. He's a singer um, and he plays the guitar and the piano and a couple other instruments. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. I think that's definitely what attracted me to him was that he's like very musical and super artistic and really funny and like friendly. He just draws people to him. Um, something kind of funny about him is that, uh, animals are really drawn to him, specifically dogs. Like, we'll be walking down the street, like, minding our own business, and people's dogs will, like, run off the leash and, like, cross the street to him. It's, it's the craziest thing. Like, it's just nuts. Like, it's almost like he's, like, Snow White or something. <laughs> I don't know. He loves nature. He really likes to skip stones. Like every time we go to the beach, he like is always like skipping stones. Um, he's, I don't know. He's a really great life companion. He is also very like intuitive and he used to do astrology. Uh, he did that for a while, but then he got really busy with like his computer work, his uh, app stuff and programming. Um, but he did that for a while. He also used to do uh reading so he can also read as well he has like his own style but it's nice because if like it's, sometimes it's hard to pull cards for yourself and I'll ask him to pull cards for me and he's like a really great reader too okay so next let's finish up the eyes getting sidetracked so we're gonna go just back in with the purple like I said we're just using one color and I'm just gonna put it down under here this is you guys are gonna notice this is gonna open the eyes up so if you don't usually put eyeshadow under your eyes you should try it and don't be afraid to go kind of low it's not going to give you dark circles or whatever it's actually just going to make your eyes look like bigger and brighter so I guess there's just so many things about him and our relationship I I can't put into words but he's just a really great supporter and and Anytime I have an idea for something, like, he's always like, how can we make that happen? And he, he believes in me. And even when I wanted to travel the world, he wasn't like, oh, that's ridiculous. Like, he was like, okay, like, let's do it. Let's make it happen. And he's just down. I think that's what I love about him. He's just super chill. He's super down. He's a Taurus, but he's really into sidereal astrology. So he identifies more as an Aries. But to be honest... Hopefully he doesn't see this because he edits my videos for me. To be honest, I do feel like he is very much a Taurus. Um, and it's weird. I don't know why I get along with Taurus so well. My best friend is also a Taurus and then her boyfriend is a Taurus. And yeah, I don't know why I tend to just... I think it's because Tauruses are just such earth signs and you guys are so calm and you like help ground me. And I feel, I don't know, I just feel like... You guys are so fun. You're just like people I can just chill with. I love Tauruses. So there we go. I'm gonna have to show you guys this look in another light after I'm done, but let's get a little bit more on this side. There we go, eyes are starting to pop. So next I'm gonna do eyeliner and what I've been doing lately, usually what I do is I put my eyeliner like just on the waterline to kind of mimic what it would be like if I had mascara down there because I don't like to put mascara down there because I feel like it just, I don't know, it just gets everywhere. So, but I've been putting my eyeliner on the inside and tight lining, kind of like I used to when I was in middle school. <laughs> 
And yes, it does close your eyes in and it does make your eyes look smaller, but I feel like it kind of gives my eyes this like interesting look. I don't know. Also, I'm not going to put any eyeliner up here. I have eyelash extensions on right now. That's also why I'm not going to be doing my lashes. And even though they've mostly fallen out, like it, I don't know. I feel like that's enough. So if you want to put a little bit of eyeliner and tight line and do a slight wing, I would recommend that with this look. Um, I don't know. I feel like lately I've really been loving to just like make the eyeshadow and the color the focus and just kind of forget about the liner. But yeah, I'm going to go on the inside of my eye. But yeah, I don't really know what else to say about my husband. If there's anything specific you want to know, let me know. I tend to keep that part of my life a little bit more private. Um, is there anywhere you have traveled to that you want to go back to? Oh my gosh. My husband and I, we both want to go back to Spain. We just had the best time there. Like time flied so fast. It was crazy. Like we were there, we lived there for three months and then all of a sudden we were on the plane and it was over. One of my friends, um, from LA came and stayed with me while I was there for a little bit and... It was so much fun. I, had, I got to celebrate my birthday there. And I got to go to this like custom perfume shop and like get all this cool like perfume stuff. <laughs> I love that stuff. I'm going to draw in a little bit to extend the inner corner of my eyes. Sorry, I'm not, I'm not like really putting myself to the camera. Um, I talked about it a little bit more on my Instagram stories because I get asked this question a lot. But I just love Spain so much. I mean, I spent a lot of time in Malaga and Granada. Granada was amazing. Somehow I got this like amazing apartment when I lived there. And it just, it, the, the balcony opened up to like the street. And there were, there were these street performers that would always play right in front of my apartment. They would play like these weird instruments like the didgeridoo and stuff like that. And they like beat on these bongo drums. There's like a lot of hippies like that live in Granada, actually. It's like a pretty chill location. We made friends there. Like there's this cool look lookout called, I think it's called the San Nicolas Plaza. And if you go up there, like there's just so many people hanging up out there. And like, um, it was like really cool location. And I made friends there like just so easily. And all, before I knew it, like I had like a little life going there and, um, yeah, I met so many people there. I even met one of you guys spotted me in Malaga and was like, promise? Like, are you Rainbow Harmony? And I was like, what? Because <laughs> they, I was talking, I was hanging out with, I met this girl who was like an energy healer. We were like hanging out and one of you guys like popped up and was like, hey, like, what, the, what are you doing here? And okay, so I am kind of slightly doing like a little wing right here, but it's just like ever so slight. So there we go. Woo! Interesting, right? Okay, so next, what should we do? <laughs> I kind of feel like I need more bronzer. I don't know why I don't feel like my face is chiseled enough. So let's just put a little bit more bronzer on. Yeah, I want to go back to Spain. The same place, honestly. Malaga, Granada. The food is really, really good. I've been dreaming about the food. I don't want to talk bad about Montenegro, but like, they just don't really have my kind of food here. It's just very plain. And they're like very big meat eaters and I am vegetarian. So it's just kind of difficult. Um, but it's good though, because I've been eating super healthy because that's like all there is for me to eat. <laughs> Thank goodness. Um, okay, so the next question is a tough one. So let's just get ready with the next step. Okay, next what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with this RMS Beauty. Um, it's their Living Luminizer. Oh, this stuff is legit, you guys. So it a little bit goes a long way. I'm just going to start putting highlighter in like certain places, you know, just like where the light naturally hits. So the next question is, do you ever get any haters for doing tarot? And that's the thing is that yes, I definitely get haters. A lot of them are people who are like super religious who are trying to like make me like, you know, convert to their religion, which I totally understand. I came from a super fundamental religious background. I was raised like that. And I remember like, you know, tarot and that kind of stuff was seen as just like the devil's work, you know? And so 
I totally understand their perspective and I feel compassion towards them. Like I feel bad because I'm like, oh my God, like, I'm sorry. Like once you understand what tarot is, you realize it's not about that at all. And it's like, can't we all just coexist? But those people are very adamant about like trying to convert me. And it's just funny because they don't realize like I understand where they're coming from 100%. It's just, you know, everybody has different beliefs. I think people should respect other people's beliefs. It's just like whatever, you know. I am not trying to convert anybody to a religion or make people believe what I believe. Like I'm just doing this for anybody who happens to resonate with it or who like needs some guidance. Uh, when I, I saw a tarot reader and got cards pulled for me at a time when I really needed it and it just really blessed me and helped me. And I, I love to give that experience to other people. And um, yeah, I don't feel like I need to explain it or anything, but I love it. It's fun and I don't think it needs to be that big of a deal. Um, I know I have like some old friends who definitely stopped talking to me. I guess I might just kind of be assuming, but I've noticed that there's some people who have distanced themselves from me. And I, sometimes I wonder if it's because like, because I'm doing tarot or if they have like certain, I don't know, it's never good to assume. Right. But sometimes I wonder if it's because they think I've like gone crazy or something or like that I like think I'm a prophet or something. <laughs> And it's not like that at all. Like the tarot is really chill. It's not, like I said, it's not something that defines me. It's just something I do for fun to help others. Like it's part of how I do my life coaching. And you're either into it or you're not. It's not one of those things where you have to like convert to a religion or like believe in it or whatever. It's just, it's not like that. And I think it's a shame that some people do hate on people for like their hobbies or their interests or their beliefs or their lifestyle or their, you know, things like that. I think as, as long as it's not hurting anybody, you know, um, blush. So I think I'm going to bring like a little bit of color into my face because it's looking kind of blah to me. And I think the best way to do that is with this color. What do you guys think about this color? I have to be really careful with this though. I can't go crazy. Now, one thing I'm gonna tell you guys about blush is don't just put it here. That's my biggest pet peeve. If you're gonna put blush here, remember you're adding a little coloring to your face. So put a tiny bit on your nose, put a tiny bit on your forehead, put a little bit on your chin. Just kind of bring it all together. You know, it's like a painting. So I think that's why I love makeup so much is because it's like painting and I love to paint. I'm happy because I just got a new paintbrush. It's not the best, but I'm painting again. I mentioned it before on the channel, but I had this amazing paintbrush and I lost it in Spain actually. So I stopped painting. I was like really depressed. I would have dreams about the paintbrush. It was weird. It was traumatizing. And I finally, like, I got another paintbrush, but it was horrible and it was, like, shedding everywhere and I just couldn't find another good one. I even emailed the place, the shop in L.A. where I got the brush and tried to get them to, like, tell me the name of the brush. But the guy who, like, sold it to me doesn't work there anymore. And I'm just like, ugh. Anyways, finally got a new paintbrush, so I'm painting again. But for a while there, that's why I got really into makeup because it was, like, my way to paint. <laughs> so, um, the last question is... What is it like being a digital nomad? So, gosh, loaded question. Being a digital nomad is just, gosh, it's amazing, at least for me. I absolutely love it. I had no idea that this lifestyle would be attainable and possible um, and that I would like it so much. It's, it's a very free lifestyle. You definitely get to that something I love about it just as an Aquarius is I get to meet so many people. Not lately because of the lockdown and stuff, but before you get to meet so many people and, um, you know, just being able to go so many different places and see the world. I feel so thankful for it. Um, I don't really know how to talk about being a digital nomad. It's it's not an easy lifestyle. Like, I feel like it's going to be in a couple days, it'll be three years since I've been a digital nomad. And I have to say, it's definitely not an easy lifestyle. I've gotten the hang of it, but 
there are a lot of uncertainties and it can get extremely difficult not having like a physical home. But that's why I recommend if you're going to be a digital nomad to do the slow travel method. Like for me, when I roll up in a country, usually with my visa, I can stay three months anywhere, most places. And so I will rent like one home or apartment for those entire three months and actually get to like live there and if I want to sometimes I'll do little traveling excursions within the country and like book a week somewhere else or whatever but I will just like live in one home that way I can have a sense of like normalcy um, little things like buying flowers and like hanging up my own pictures and bringing my own bedding like really helps me to feel like each home is like mine so being a digital nomad is very similar to like, imagine if you had to move like every three months. <laughs> Somehow I've been really lucky lately. Like I got residency in Croatia, got to live there for a year. And now I have, I'm able to stay here in Montenegro as long as I want. In fact, if I wanted to move here and stay here forever, I could. I have an opportunity, but I plan on moving on as you know, soon as I can. Even though I do like it here, I've been living in here in the Balkans for a very long time. I didn't intend when I set out to travel to live in Eastern Europe for so long. <laughs> I spent almost a year in Tbilisi, Georgia, and then I only meant to come to Croatia for three months just so I could like reset my Shenzhen visa so I could go back into the rest of Europe. And then the lockdown happened and... Here I am. So it's weird. Like I've been learning how to like, I really understand like Serbian, Croatian, the language now and like can kind of speak it a little bit. I was like, you just, that's the thing about being a digital nomad is you just never know what to expect. Like anything can happen. So, okay. Lipstick. So I'm going to use this uh, ColourPop Lippy Pencil in Lumiere, and then I've got the Maybelline Superstay Matte Ink in number 165, Successful. <laughs> I love the name of that lipstick. I love this lipstick. This is legit, you guys. Drugstore makeup, yes. Um, it's just so perfect. So, can't really talk a lot when I'm putting this on, so enjoy the silence. <laughs> Dang it, this needs to be sharpened, and I just don't know where my sharpener is, so. Actually, I do know. It's in the drawer behind me, and I'm too lazy to get it, so. Whatever. I'm using a lip brush. I think that this is the tip for using this kind of really matte, thick, dark lipstick is to spread it out, like, and just use a proper lip brush for it. Oh, it's such a pretty color. So yeah, being a digital nomad is an adventure. And I think what I'm doing is I'm traveling and I'm just traveling till I find somewhere that feels like home. I know that I don't wanna go back to America. I'm still exploring some of the countries, there's like one or two countries I've been in so far that I do feel like is a really good match for me, but I just want to be sure. And then I will move. But for now, I'm really loving traveling. It does get exhausting sometimes, but I'm getting so used to it. And it's just, it's a beautiful lifestyle. I definitely think if you want to be a digital nomad, you need to plan things out. You need to make sure that you have your job and everything, your income together before you leave. And um, have travel insurance. Insurance is really important. I didn't have it at first when I first left, but over time I started adulting more and was like, I need to get insurance. So having health insurance, travel insurance, like just be smart about it. Don't just leave with your little backpack and no plan. 
I've seen people who are doing that and they're like begging. They're like spanging in like these cities and they're like asking for money for travel. And it's like they're playing instruments and they're trying to get people to... They're playing instruments horribly. <laughs> and they're trying to get money to foot, to foot their travel bill. And it's like... I don't know. I don't want to judge those people. But it's kind of disrespectful when you they're doing it in a foreign country. When there's people like... Like, for instance, when I was in Georgia, I've seen these people everywhere. When I was in Georgia, um, or Tbilisi, the country Georgia, I I saw these people that were doing that. And, you know, they, they don't really have beggars in that country. They have very poor people or, like, older women or on the street, but they'll be selling pens or they'll be selling lemons. Like they'll offer something like, yes, they need money and they're poor and they could be homeless, but they're asking for something like in exchange, like, or they're, they're offering something in exchange and, um, you know, they're from that country. And so it's just so hard to watch people mainly from America begging in these foreign countries so that they can keep traveling, Ugh, going on a tangent, but basically don't be that person and you should be fine. <laughs> so I think that I'm done here. I did put on a lot of lipstick. I think I just got carried away, but oh my gosh. See you guys, whenever I'm talking and doing my makeup, I kind of just don't think about it. And then all of a sudden I create a masterpiece. So let's take this into some light and see what it looks like. So here we go. I've got some better light now and you can really see what's going on with the makeup. It's this purple theme, as you can tell, and I just love it. I've done it a couple times, and every time I do this one, you guys are always like, oh my gosh, please do a tutorial. How do you do it? It's super easy. I literally just use one eyeshadow color, and it's just not hard. So I know that it seemed like it took a really long time, <laughs> but it's just because I got carried away. This whole makeup look you could probably do in like 10, maybe 15 minutes. And you don't have to do all the contouring and stuff. So find like a shimmery kind of iridescent purple uh, shadow and you should be good. And then just like black eyeliner. That's all it is. Pretty much that's all it is. And then this lip color I think is key, but it's Maybelline. You can get it anywhere. So if you want a tutorial on the hairstyle, let me know. All I use is two bobby pins and a hair straightener. I learned how to use my hair straightener to curl and it's been really, really fun. I love this, it's kind of like a 40s style, but yeah, if you guys have any que more questions about makeup, if there's any looks you wanna see me do, like let me know colors you wanna see me do, because I do like to theme my makeup looks around colors, obviously, so if you wanna see like a blue look or something like that, maybe if you wanna see a green look, I don't have any green eyeshadow, but it could be an excuse to go get some. <laughs> um, yeah, let me know if you want to see that. And if you have any questions just about me or my life or you want to know more about me, let me know. And maybe I'll do like another chatty get ready, get ready with me sometime in the future. So if you have any more questions even just about like me or my life, then let me know uh, in the comments down below. And maybe I'll make another chatty get ready with me. Don't forget to like and thumbs up. And I will see you guys next time. Peace out.